Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about what I do, please subscribe to my channel. Today I'm outside in my, surrounded by my orchids in southwest Florida. And what I want to share with you today is a problem that I'm having with a few of my orchids. Um, they don't <laughs> always grow beautiful all the time. There, there are issues as I've shared with you in the past. And today something that uh, kind of crept up on me and uh, I need to, need to take care of it pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, and what I'm dealing with is a fungal contamination issue, I think. And so what I want to share with you today is a couple of methods that I'm going to use to hopefully uh, resolve this. And the, fungus, the, the fungal problems that I'm dealing with are in my, some of my seedlings, some of my deflast uh, orchids, and some of my new ones. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure what's going on. Uh, it, I'm outside. The humidity's uh, not that high here, but these are just some issues that you have to deal with. So, and, and these are with some of my deflast ones. A lot of my deflast orchids look, I mean, they look, I think, they look, they look great. They look, they look really nice. I've got a whole mixture of uh, different plants here. I've got uh, some encyclias. I've got uh, right encyclias in the front here. I've got dendrobiums from a few different seed lots. And, and overall, they look pretty good. Um, there, here's another batch of seedlings that I have. Again, they look, um, they look really uh, pretty nice. So uh, again, same thing, lots of encyclias because of what I'm doing with uh, encyclias, uh, mounting them in, in trees uh, locally. Um, and I've got other, some of my, my cattleyas also looking good. Here's, here's a couple of different um, cattleyas that I have that are, that are looking, looking okay. And these look just fine. Um, they're growing maybe as fast as I'd, I'd like them to. Here is, look, there, there's just, look at this, look at this encyclia right here. So this is again about a, um, it, it's, it was placed, I planted this as seed a little over two years ago. And this, they're, they're not all like this, but this one is just um, a monster for a <laughs> little over two year old seedling. So it's doing uh, quite well. And then I've got this, which is my uh, Lelia uh, pumila or Catlea pumila. And again, this one is doing well. It's got a couple of new pseudobulbs coming out on it. And where I have it, it's just, it's just doing, it's doing great. Um, but what I have is an issue with uh, this one. And this is a uh, self that I have from one of my cat layers. That's just my first self. Uh, this is uh, Lorian Paradise. And what you can see, I think you should be able to see pretty clearly, is right here on this leaf. It looks like uh, there's a little bit of a, a problem with, it's either leaf burn or a fungal contaminant. And the reality of it is that I've watched this grow. It started out as a small spot and then it grew larger and larger. So it, it's, it's, I don't, it's not burn. It appears to be an issue with a fungus that got in either through an insect hole or a crack or something like that. Uh, and it's, uh, it needs to be remedied. It needs to be taken care of. Um, so what I'm gonna do with this one is just, um, I'm gonna cut it off. Uh, not the whole leaf. I'm going to cut the leaf probably right around here. And I want to get rid of the, the spot that contains probably the fungus. And I want to, I want to get enough, oh, rid of enough of the green area so that the fungus isn't, that's in the leaf that's growing down through the leaf uh, isn't, uh, isn't still there. Uh, what happens is the fungus grows through the leaf. The leaf dies either. It can die in advance of the growth of the fungus, and this is a defense response of the plant to the fungus, or um, it can just die <laughs> as a result of the fungal infection. But regardless, we want to cut uh, right around here in order to just make sure that the, that the fungus is not there. When we cut, I will use my... Um, my uh, Falco 
uh, shears and I want to make sure that these are contaminated because where I cut it I don't want to have an open wound uh, I don't want to have an area that I'm just spreading the contamination and it's really important to disinfect your instruments as you're working with them this is a this is um, uh, uh, shears that I only use for my orchid so it's very sharp and you may or may not be able to tell it but at the end it looks like it's uh, it's used but it's actually just kind of um, it, it's burned and I sterilize this instrument uh, a couple of couple of different ways I'm using really one major way uh, right now um, there are two different ways, there are a number of different ways to sterilize your instruments before you do surgery like this on your orchid. You can use uh, alcohol, and this is just 70% uh, rubbing alcohol. Uh, and this is, and what you do is you, not in this container of course, but I pour this uh, into a glass and then I stick this in the glass and then I pull it out and let it air dry for a few minutes before I use it. Uh, this one I have labeled, you can't really tell, but it's labeled for, it says orchids right here, it's labeled for orchids. And I use this only for my orchids. Um, this is 70%. You can also get higher concentrations. Um, it really doesn't matter, and, and the reality of it is that 70% has a little better wetting capability, so it gets into the, the cracks and crevices a little better than the 90%. But either, either one work fine. So just dip it in the, uh, if you want to use this route, dip it in the alcohol for just a few minutes, take it out, let it air dry, and then you're ready to go. Um, you can use it. What I'm using, the method that I like to use, involves this. And this is just a, a very simple uh, hand torch. And this works um, nicely, it works well. Make sure that you keep this away from this. This is flammable, uh, so we're gonna put it way out of the way. And make sure you know what you're doing when you use a torch. But this is, this is what I like to use. This is similar to, to some of the methods that I use in the laboratory. And, and, and you gotta be a little careful when you do this. So the first thing that you do need to do is uh, with this one, this has a lock and you gotta make sure it's off. Uh, some of these things you have to ignite yourself. So you have to either use a flint or, flint or a match or a lighter. This has its own uh, ignition inside of it. And what you do is you, you may not be able to see it, but there's a flame coming out of here. It's a very light blue flame and kind of hard to see, but I hope you can hear it. And what I do is I flame off my instrument, and this right now is pretty hot. And so I'll wait for this to cool just a, just a minute, but it really doesn't matter uh, that much, uh, so, it, so it doesn't need to cool um, too much. But what I'll do is I'll take my, uh, my cat layer right here, and I'll put the blade a little bit below where this is, and you just simply remove it. And what you see behind it is another leaf that I'm gonna take off as well, or half of this leaf right here, okay? So these are leaves that I'm cutting. I'm not gonna do anything to the leaves. I'm just gonna let them dry. Uh, what you can do is apply fungicide or a powder or something to the cut surface, but I'm just gonna cut these off and just let this sit. So this is what it looks like the interesting thing is that this cross may be prone, which is not good, prone to fungal, fungal issues and fungal infection, which is not good. And it's actually a self, which means that there may be some recessive genes that are brought to the surface when you perform a self. And the reason I say that, because one of the siblings right here, I had the same issue, uh, and I cut the leaf off about a... Uh, about a a month and a half ago, and you hopefully you can see it, but it's this leaf right here that was cut, and that leaf is uh, now dried out. There's no further, if, if you don't do this, the fungus just keeps on growing. It can grow down through the pseudobulb and, and into the plant, and you just want to get rid of the fungus uh, as soon as you can, as soon as possible. Um, what's happening with these plants is that there's another bulb uh, growing out here uh, with a plant that I uh, cut for today. There's again, there's a pseudobulb uh, right here growing out, and you just want to make sure that these things are clean before they, before they um, you know, and, and, and then they'll put out some new growth. If this is an issue, it may not be worth um, trying to keep on cutting the leaves off the plant and rescuing the plant, and this just may be a bad self or a bad cross. 
So um, that's really one of the things that I wanted to show you today is how to sterilize your instrument and cut off a, any, any kind of problem that you may have with uh, contamination. The other thing to follow up, just so that this doesn't happen too much more, is you can apply, as you might imagine, you can apply fungicide. And there's lots of different uh, fungicides that you can use on your orchids as well as your other plant. Make sure that you read the label as, as far as knowing uh, how safe it is. I always, whenever I apply fungicide, I always wear gloves. I'm always careful. I always wash up uh, afterwards. I, I apply what I need. I rinse the container out. I move on. I don't put the fungicide in the same containers that I use for my fertilizers. Uh, I do use fungicides and insecticides in the same container and sometimes I mix those, but I don't want to get into that today. Um, here's one of the fungicides that I like using, uh, Dithane uh, M45. And this is, this is nice. It's, uh, a lot of people use this for orchids. Um, I also, I don't know if you can see, I also put the application rate on the outside um, just so you don't have to dig through it and read every time. But all of the, all of my, uh, you know, fungicide, insecticides, I put the application dose, I just write it in big letters on the outside of the container so I'll make sure I know it. But Dithane is good, Captan uh, is also good. Uh, and I'll use these and I'll make sure, again, to protect uh, if I have other plants around and I've got a tomato right here, parsley right there, I make sure that those are covered, moved out of the way before I apply this. Um, I don't mind using chemicals, but I'm really careful uh, when I do this. Sometimes uh, you, you just need to resort to these types of things, or at least I do. Either that or throw your plant away that becomes overinfected. Okay, so um, that's all I have. I uh, just wanted to share with you again one of the issues that I'm having. Uh, I'm having other issues. I'll talk about those uh, in, a, in a future video. But um, seedlings, for the most part, they look nice. I have a few that uh, needed to take care of, and that's what I wanted to share with you today. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about what I do, please subscribe to my channel, and happy propagating.